taking a look then at uh, the, the SOLIDWORKS CAM in 2018. Uh, as I mentioned, the education version, we'll see that next July. Um, corporate versions um, you may encounter. And the standard version is, um, is set up that it will work inside of the part. So one of the things that we haven't gotten to, I'm going to use our same, um, um, same uh, part that we've, uh, we've, we've used on a couple of the, uh, the master cam and the, um, the HSM. Uh, and um, we've, we've been developing or, or creating our programs with the strategy that we will leave the original model, the original file alone. Um, basically so that we're in compliance with document control. We're not uh, affecting or changing an original, uh, the original approved document. And since um, the, um, the CAMWorks, or I keep, I'm going to keep calling it CAMWorks, but the SOLIDWORKS CAM, uh, CAMWorks standalone only works on parts, we have to take a slightly different strategy from putting it into an assembly. So I'm opening up a blank part and I'm going to make a derived part. It has, has this pretty much the same functionality as assembly, but it's still treated as, as a part. So this comes in. It's a, uh, an insert. We're going to tell it to bring in the, uh, the part. Uh, it's finding my, my last one. So we'll go to chapter two. And actually that was in 276, wasn't it? So I already had one copied over. I won't mess with the original too bad. All right, so picking up our uh, our file for the um, project 2-23, two, two make sure that I've got the part file. Oh, we've defaulted to part, okay, because I told it to insert a part. Um, so you get this list of what do you want to bring in. Solid bodies, surface bodies, axes, planes, cosmetic threads, um, everything on the list. Might as well see if we can get the whole wizard data because of the, uh, the countersinks and the threaded holes. To a certain extent, uh, the CAMWorks database, the, the CAM database is going to uh, look at that, uh, that geometry. And being a drive part, we don't really want to break the link to the original because we want to maintain that associativity that if there is a revision, it goes through the control process, it's approved, it's released, the model updates. Next time we open up the program to make the new, the new part, I want all of this geometry to update. I don't want to be looking for it. Um, locating the part with move copy feature, as opposed to just saying go ahead and hit OK, puts it origin to origin, kind of like the uh, the assembly. So my template is in inch, pounds, and seconds. Um, not sure what changed, but go ahead and change the unit of the drive part uh, to the units of the base part. Um, so the default part is probably in metric, and the um, uh, the the base part what we're importing is uh, is in inches so anytime i see that warning i'm going to go in and we know that this is a quarter 20 diameter 201 i'm not concerned about scale anymore if it was anything different all right what's going on with the scale what what did i tell it to do all right so if we use the um, kind of the direct editing um, move copy bodies uh, to position this then underneath the other uh, group, we would see the solid bodies. We see the whole threads. We would also see a mates that would be putting this into, uh, into that position. All right. So setting this up, then we're going to, um, jump over into the, uh, the cam. Let's go ahead and save this as, um, as our, our file. And typically in this situation, even if it was an assembly, I would give it a, an extension. We have duplicate name, and this is going to be, um, I'll just put cam on the end of it. Okay. So going through, uh, through the process, we have the three tabs. Not overly concerned with the tool tree. Um, pretty much this is the default tool crib. Most of the time, uh, well, you know, like we did with uh, with HSM, like we're doing with the, the standalone MasterCam, like we would do with the MasterCam solids. 
we would decide if we're using a tool crib or if we're going to set up tools for each program individually. So if I'm setting up tools individually, then this is, this is just what was in that tool crib. And I'm more concerned when I go into the, the machine definition, what I'm, what I'm seeing or what I'm selecting for that, uh, that tool crib. So at the very top, extract machinable features. I'm not ready to do that just yet because this is going to start applying tools and doing things that I'm not quite ready for. Uh, defining the machine, well, we can build that in and that will also show up under the machine definition. Options I'm always interested in. All right, when we set these as the default, uh, save, restore, save, restore, assembly. Well, we're not really picking up the assembly unless we bought the, uh, the professional from what I can tell. Um, SolidWorks disable the auto saving, um, mainly because um, with the uh, the program, or with um, the, the cam trying to save and SolidWorks saving, and do you want to be notified? You would, you know, it ends up that you're saving all of. It seems like you're saving all of the time. Um, technology database is update the uh, the tool selection. And if there's a tool library change, does it modify the tool or add a new tool? So if you're making a custom tool, does it write the new tool or modify an existing? Uh, then the setup sheets, uh, mill holders, uh, mill features, and again, a lot of par uh, parameters. When it extracts machinable features, what is it looking for? Uh, the holes, non-holes, boss, face, the part perimeter. Well, in the process of setting up our stock and setting up our um, our, our creating our part setup, uh, we're going to have the option to select face and perimeter. So it doesn't really need to do it under the extract machinable features or the automatic feature recognition. Uh, hole recognition uh, groups, let's see, some of this I don't, um, I don't recognize for, uh, with, with it going 2017, 2018. Um, on the display, the settings, let's see, um, basically what are all the colors, and then are we outputting any of this information to e-drawings? So if there's e-drawings output, what do you want to, uh, to have output with it? And then more simulation settings uh, on update. Uh, what's going to happen when it rebuilds? Let's see, um, operations and tool pass, documents with external references. Uh, mainly, this is now a document with an external reference because we brought in and made a drive part. It has that reference back to the original. All right, and so we can apply all these tool paths to the original, but again, it depends on our document control. So if there is a rebuild warning or something, something changes, maybe we would turn that one on if we're using that and prompt to rebuild when either of those happen. Uh, file locations. And let's see, for this, we're going to be able to output code. So one of the things that I like to see, um, we have the tech uh, DB location, uh, data folder, setup sheet images, uh, open G code file in SolidWorks CAM NC editor. That one's new, so I'm going to go ahead and check it. Usually, open G code in the following application, I'll just have it open in Notepad. So I can do a quick preview before I send it to the machine or just to get a, a sense of what it's um, uh, doing for the output. And then if I want to write in the, um, the last um, uh, go home, do a tool change, you know, some, some little piece of code, or I don't like the order that it finishes in. Do an M09 when you get to the retract plane on the last operation so the coolant turns off instead of spraying all the way up. Little things like, uh, like that I would like to see in the code. All right, so once we set those, they're, they're pretty much, um, they're there. Not, uh, not too much to, uh, to work from. And then the one that you should, um, uh, get familiar with and, be comfortable with often is the TechDB. All right, so the TechDB is the brains behind our automatic feature recognition. Uh, so even if you're not changing anything, you're not making adjustments, uh, just being familiar with the uh, the process. So the full version next week I'll bring in um, I'll bring in the dongle for the uh, the 2017 full version has 
more of the access database. So SolidWorks has modified this to be a little more user friendly or a little less daunting. And so the, uh, the machine setup, mill inches default. Uh, one of the things that I would want to, to do is we can set up for the, uh, the Haas TM1. And milling machine, sample. Um, now I'll take off the sample. I don't really have a description for it. The, uh, the post processor then is one of the, uh, the defaults. So mill, uh, analams, fagors, Haas VF3 close enough, right? Haas is going to work across all those. Medium duty, probably not. I would classify it as a light duty machine and not worried about um, uh, subroutines, output multiple parts by tool, feature, or part. Uh, we'll have to look into that one. That one I don't recognize. Then we go into the specifications. Well, if those will suck up as we go. So more like a 10 horsepower machine, uh, index time is as fast as the operator can move, changing tools out. <laughs> so when it's doing the calculation, max feed rate wouldn't even say that much. Rapid accelerations, um, table travel. I want to say that machine is uh, either 30 or 40. So 30, um, pretty sure it's around 16, and either 18 or 20 in, in Z. So we'll, we'll guess. Um, table travel is not as uh, as critical. Um, no fourth axis, no indexing, so that doesn't really matter. The uh, the turret tool change um, sequential tool changer or uh, turret index preload tool changer. So the side mount, um, we want it to go to the next tool and then swap. Um, Actually, I'm not, um, I have to look at the, um, the terminology on those. And then the default tool crib, we're going to go with empty. I will either create one or I want it to come up blank and I'm going to add tools every time I write the program. Uh, we'll go by directional number of tools. I don't believe is, well, we'll stay at 20 because of this one. I'm thinking of the TM, TM1s and the TM2 with the tool changer is probably 15. No substations. Tool crib priority says that um, pick from the group that we've set. So if I add five tools, uh, when I before I do the automatic feature recognition, or there's ten tools in the uh, the tool crib before I do automatic feature recognition, try to pick one of those first. If you can't use it, then go to the tech TB, pick out the next um, next group. That one's a new one. Use tool crib tools only. So I would expect that some of those would fail and say, I just can't use that tool, even though I know I can make it use that tool. So we'll, we'll wait on that one. Uh, I'm not worried about overlaps, tool change times, spindle speeds. All right, so max RPM, 4,000. Putting in a, a value for the max RPM, all of those operations will default back. So one of the things that, that comes up with, uh, with programming is that if I have three Haas machines, uh, 12,000, a 10,000, and a 7,500 RPM spindle, I pretty much want to program to the 12,000. And then when it updates or I create um, uh, another program or set to, to that machine in uh, inside of the full version, and I'm going to kind of do a little bit of crossover here inside of the full version, I can set configurations for those machines that when I output, it will automatically update those feeds and speeds numbers to the max RPM of that particular machine. So on the other side is I won't end up doing a feed and speed calc or speed and feed calculation that says, oh, 10, 12,000 RPM at 100 inches a minute when there's no way that machine can do it. 4,000 RPM, um, max surface feet per minute, and when we get to a, um, a feed rate of a thou or two thou per per flute, it'll back calculate to to that number. And then for the setup, let's see what's under there. Indexing, so mostly ro rotation. All right, good with that. And then we will save. So that should write it to the to now be the default. And we can add additional machines. I don't have a five axis, so Let's see if I highlight the five axis. 
And are you sure you want to delete this record? Yeah, I'm not worried about the five axis. Maybe four axis, not five axis. All right, so back to mill. And so first is the machines. And then it gets more complicated from there. All right, so features and operations. And again, this is a slightly different format, but um, whole conditions, all of the different uh, features that it will recognize, and then the strategy. And then based on those informations, uh, that information, what it's going to, uh, to look for in that feature. And then it jumps down to what is it going to generate when it recognizes that feature. All right, so that relational database, we're here with the, the blind in condition, then it's going to center drill and then drill. And these are the equations it's going to use to figure out depths. So we can tunnel down and get more in depth in the logic, uh, but just understand that it's there at this point. And uh, as we go through and build operations that we like, we can write them back to this, to this database. So going back to the mill, and again, lots of information there, multi-stepped holes. So uh, a multi-step would be, I have a, um, a spot face to a tap to a, um, uh, to a, um, uh, an angled flange to accept, you know, like the, uh, the gas, um, uh, the gas fittings. And then it has a certain size hole. And each time it sees that geometry, it's going to do all five of those operations as one multi-stepped hole. So again, no level of complexity, not really ready for that. Thread milling then, um, all of the, uh, the values and the different sizes. So being able to helically interpolate um, threads. Uh, operation sorting, how do you want them to be defined? What order do you want to be defined? So you wouldn't put a rough before a finish. So, you know, kind of the general rule. But if there was something that I wanted it to do prior to, I could um, I could reorder these a little bit so that one doesn't get changed very much. Um, don't recognize that one. Oh, mapping the uh, the features. Uh, what is going to be applied to each of those um, uh, those feature and um, the original feature? Yeah, not not overly familiar with that one. Operation parameters. Okay, so uh, right now we're with the uh, the default. And this picked up a feature operation for the uh, the boring cycle. So I want to go to um, uh, let's take a look at uh, let's do the face mill since we'll probably do one of those first. Default inch uh, shows me the description, number of cuts, max step over. These are the parameters that I'm going to see when it adds an operation over in this in this tab. So if I know what those items are, I can go through and say, uh, make these the default, save it back to the tech DB so I don't have to change it. The next tab over in C, I like to have setup definitions, and I'll tell you why in a little bit. Um, but a lot of these, since I'm setting this up for the first time, I will go straight to the setup definitions. All right, gives me kind of a global for all operations. I can set a value and have all my operations go to the same rapid, the same clearance. Uh, feed and speed, we'll go by operation. And don't know what those values are just yet, but we'll work into it. And so this is really just mainly an example of, uh, of getting into the, uh, the tech DB. So um, you know, again, early and often. The more you kind of look over this and get familiar with the uh, the process, um, just seeing where this is developing, relating this menu to what's going on in the operation menus, you you start to see the parallels. And when you're making adjustments, if you're changing the same things over and over again as you're writing the programs, it's time to come find this window and make that that change permanent. If we haven't haven't already updated it some other way. Um, the advanced, I really don't ever change anything under the advanced and optimize all pretty good. So all the way back at the uh, the top and we'll go ahead and save. All right, so that does something to the uh, to the face mill. Um, rough mill. All right, so the downside then is we go to the default or we would have to change each of these. Um, so rough mill, same thing, roughing everything that we would see. DNC, options, 
advanced. All right, so each of these is a tab that we're going to, to see in the operation. Uh, default setup parameters, um, rapid plane. All right, so those um, by setup definition, here's the setup definition for condition one. Distance of one inch and top of stock, top of feature, 0.1. Z limits, this will be the, uh, the default, so I don't need to change anything there. And then tool crib one is empty. I can populate this out and save it as a new tool crib. Or we just um, look at uh, tool crib three assemblies. And again, when I went into the uh, to the assembly, I'll have to double check. But um, when I went into the assembly, I didn't see the uh, see the tab. So I think that's um, I haven't found the uh, the official documentation. But at this point, I'm going with the um, the standard will work on parts and not in assemblies. You have to move up to professional. All right, so I jumped out of that kind of quick, but basically went through all the tabs. And this is um, easily, that interface is probably 10% 10, 10 of what's in the full version in the Access database. All right, so just scratching the surface and being able to navigate some of that, um, that background information. All right, so the mill machine, edit the definition. It comes up with our tab. And we have the Haas TM and select. Uh, come over to the tool crib. I set it as the default empty. So I need to either populate this or let the automatic feature recognition populate it for me. So to add a tool, it comes over. We're adding a, um, uh, we're going to do the face first. I oh, will just do the, uh, the flat end mill and uh, a diameter. Usually I try to give it a broad enough range that um, it can find it. So if I was looking for a quarter inch, I might go 0.2 to 0.3. The half inch it finds pretty easily, so upwards of 9 inch. So the two flute uh, carbide end mill. And we go ahead and hit OK. It adds it to the list, and now it is part of my tool grip. I can go through and populate that. I decide, wow, that's a really great tool grip. I want to use that again. I save it, I give it a name, it writes it back to that database. And then it will show up down here under an available tool crib. So sometimes um, uh, customers with common parts, um, very similar parts, um, I'll create one tool crib and try to find the most complicated one that has uh, the widest variety of tools and then use that for every part that we're making for that customer. And then it's loaded up in the machine or it's all, all set up, uh, ready to go. And then uh, as I change out parts, I'm basically just changing out setups. And, you know, just like we did, if I don't use tools 3, 5, and 7 for that part, oh, well, they're loaded, they're ready to go. Under the, uh, the post processor then, it did default over to my VF3 if I had a custom. Usually what I do is navigate uh, to this folder and I keep all of these um, all of these post files, but I pretty much break this down to I have an Analam, I have an, uh, Haas, uh, the Haas VF3 post will work, and I have, I don't know, something else. And I would just have those three in here to select from, not a list of 50 that I, I don't, don't use. Uh, parameters and machine controls, we can put some of those in or should be in from the uh, the group uh, coolant uh, locations program number one depending on the post there may be more or less and this information gets written into the header the setup then these are going to go into uh, these are going to go into the uh, the rotary and multi-axis and we can go ahead and define a fixture coordinate system uh, but the way this works, this coordinate system, I think, is probably more user-friendly, or, or they're the same thing. I just kind of have already adopted the habit I want to go through this thing systematically. So I'll do the stock manager, and then I'll pick up the coordinate system. And then rotary axis, tilt axis for multi-axis positioning, don't care about just yet. Go ahead and hit OK. We look at the stock manager, and stock type is prismatic. Our choices are an extruded sketch, so maybe I drew something that was representative of the stock boundary, um, an STL file that was previously created, 
or a, another part file that was either work in progress or you know just standard stock coordinate system at the uh, at the origin bounding box offset so if we wanted to add stock again that just shifts the uh, the numbers I'd rather do that at the uh, the machine oh it is doing number of stocks so that's interesting that um, uh, we can do multiple and if it will allow multiple work offsets I got to build up to that. All right, so nothing else in there in the stock manager and ready to go to the coordinate system. All right, so I'm touching each one of these, even if I'm not changing anything, I'm just looking at it going through the uh, the checklist, edit the definition. Uh, origin was on an entity. Well, I really didn't set anything up and I didn't create a coordinate system. So um, part bounding box vertex. All right, so I kind of like that graphic. It's a little bit different than what I'm used to, but that being the case, if I grab that vertex, orientation is correct. Um, I could also set the uh, the axes, but I, I see that that's where I want it. I'm okay with that. And if I rotate it around, it's it's on the corner. The other thing I could do is on the axes, I could pick along that edge, 4x, that edge along y, reverse the directions, and, and pull it in. All right. So if we um, if we gave it the uh, the bounding box in the uh, the previous for the uh, the stock, we would have that shift or that offset to run inside of. All right, and then the last option is to go ahead and create a SolidWorks coordinate system. All right, so now I have a user defined, and I've gone through that process. Now what? I need to set up. We can tell it what we're going to do. And at some point, it'd be nice to save this since I've done all that work. And let's see, it's going to be back at Stock Manager, Mill Parts Setup. Oh, and then um, I think you've already seen it in my uh, my master cam, my HSM, the other programs that I use. I'm very rarely up on the Command Manager. I'm heavy on the right mouse button. Um, so, you know, if you're comfortable with... Um, Coming up to the command manager, everything that I'm doing is also up here. Um, it's just my workflow says that I can right click, go to mill parts setup, and up here I have to look for it. So I know it's up here, uh, probably setup, mill setup. Yeah, I'll just do it my way. <laughs> mill part setup. All right, so it finds the front plane. And notice that the little arrow is pointed the wrong direction for what we're telling it to do. So that would be something I'd want to identify. I'm okay with the uh, the front plane as a uh, as a direction, and when I flip that over, now my Z direction is in the direction of the target. That's kind of hard to see with the uh, the magenta on the gray, um, but I am verifying that that arrow pointing down is actually pointing down. Do I want it to add a face feature? Now we decided this stock was okay at whatever the stock came in as. Or we can go over to and cut the perimeter as a boss. So I'll let it add the, the perimeter, even though that may be my last operation. I'll go ahead and put it into the, um, to the feature mix, get it started. And then there's no multi-surface features, so pretty much, okay, go ahead and generate a setup. At this point, I've done all of the, uh, the legwork. I have the, uh, the perimeter boss. Now I don't have a problem with, uh, you know, if I, I've set up the tools a little bit further along, I don't have a problem with extracting machinable features. Oops, wrong one. Extract machinable features. It's going through and it's finding the geometry. And so feature, irregular pocket, a brown pocket, a regular slot, eh, probably not that one. It can go away. I'll do that with the, um, the perimeter boss. Or I'll set up an, a different open profile. It doesn't need to be a specific operation. Uh, rectangular, kind of the same thing there. I'll let the um, the operation. So that one gets kicked out. The hole and drill, eh, probably a little a larger side. That would probably be a, a drill, uh, pilot drill, and go through with um, uh, with an end mill. Let's see if that's highlighting a little bit better. Um, the other hole, all right, so what I'm looking for is the, um, the tapped holes. 
and the countersunk hole. So all of those are pretty much just straight through. We get to the um, to the drill group. Nope, not quite. There we go. There's the uh, the tapped holes. All right. So on this one, we'll go into uh, brain fade. Um, we'll go into the parameters. Strategy is to thread. It recognizes from the thread parameters that there's a quarter twenty. It's tap cutting. If it's a roll tap, it's going to pick a different tap drill. And if it's thread milling, then there's a, a different set for, for that grouping. Um, if it was a quarter 28, I would go to the library and pick up a quarter 28. But quarter 28 wouldn't be 201. Yeah, so it's getting pretty close based on our, on our number. And then the countersunk. Uh, there was only one of those. But if we look at the parameters, drill. And since it found it as a countersink and... Uh, I was going to just, yeah, there it is, 82 degree angle with a diameter of 635. It'll cut to, to that value. All right, so anything I put in the recycle bin gets ignored. And and so it did pretty good on the holes. Okay on the uh, the perimeter, you know, a couple of things that I didn't need. Um, you know, I can count this one as, you know, that automatic feature recognition found 60, 70% of my features. Call that a, a pretty good um, uh, first pass. All right, so generate the operation plan. And now everything in here shows up. And these, in with the explanation points, were tools that were not originally in the TechDB. All right, so if I go back to, or sorry, not TechDB, in my tool crypt. So I go back into the uh, to the machine and edit that definition. Tool crib now has a bunch of tools in it. Am I going to use all of those? Probably not. All right, but if I go through and oh yeah, I need that one, and I need that one, I can do a little reorganizing, get a little better at it, um, make some decisions with 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 what's here. And kind of like the same thing we did with HSM. If I can open all of these up with the biggest small tool that we can fit into the holes, then I can also go back and just tell it to run those as a, as a profile, as a bore. All right, so I don't want to go through each and every operation. Intent is the overview and um, kind of get us, uh, get us started. So that being the case... Let's identify drills, 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 center drill. Uh, being aluminum, do I need to center drill? Not necessarily. Uh, three quarter by 90 degrees, so that would, um, would pop those open. Do I need to do all of the, the sizing? Probably not. Um, so one of the things that I would, um, that we'll do is um, let's see we'll be able to nope don't want to do that yet I was going to see if there was um, like a folder operation where I could uh, I could group those up nope haven't added that yet so future enhancement request all right so we'll stay with the uh, the half inch end mill and give give that a good start all right so each of these is in that um, that blue and has not been uh, generated as a toolpath. So what you don't want to do, in my opinion, or one of the worst things that you can do, in my opinion, is right-click and generate toolpath because it's going to go through every one of these and set default parameters. I want kind of an accounting process that says, I have looked at that one, I haven't looked at that one, I've looked at that one, I haven't looked at that one. And I can go through and set up a, uh, a system that uh, my little check mark as I look at each of those operations and I make a decision, yes, it is good to go. It has changed from blue to whatever color it changes to. And um, uh, I, I may have to go back based on what I see on the screen. I may have to go back and make adjustments, but at least it has the first pass on it. I haven't missed anything. You're saying it does that or you wish it does? No, I, it does that. Okay. So right now, as it, after we preview it, this color is going to change. Okay. I'm not familiar enough with it to tell you, oh, it's going to go over to magenta. In um, uh, my, my full system, it starts out as magenta and turns to blue. So here it's going to go blue and then turn to magenta. I don't know. <laughs> All 
So we go, um, we're going to get something that is a designator that says you have looked at this and previewed it to generate a toolpath or you've told it to generate that operations toolpath. All right, so tool definitions, holders, tool crib, stations, pretty much what we've already set. Uh, if we needed to make minor changes, we could um, do a little, um, some little tweaks on the, uh, the parameters uh, without setting up a completely new tool. Or if this was a bad selection, we get down here to the drills and I want a different, I can come over to the tool crib uh, replace the existing tool with a tool from the in from the list. Feeds and speeds, and this is why I was setting from library to operation. Very rarely do I like um, I like the uh, the defined by the library. Um, if I went through and I set up more of the library operations, okay, I could um, I could go with that. Um, for the most part, I want to be able to set these numbers for this machine. Half inch tool, 4,000 RPM, 15, 15.2 uh, inches per minute. I'm okay with that. The Z feed rate mm, will probably go to 100 and 100 if I'm setting percentages. All right, so the advantage of the 100 and the 100 on the percentage is that I decide, hey, this can really cut it. Um, uh, three thousandths per, per tooth. The XY feed goes to 24. These both follow it at 24. As long as I'm not in a plunge situation where that 24 is, is scary, everything else lead in, everything else being equal, um, these just update instead of being hard coded. All right. So depending on where this is at, I will switch between 100% to, um, hard coding, uh, feed rates. You know, just kind of as a situational. I think more out of habit, I lock the spindle speed. Okay, it's set there. Go ahead and keep it there. Um, then we get into the controls. And just like we, what, we, what we're seeing in Mastercam, what we're seeing in HSM, what we're seeing in these, in, in the CAM packages, even if I'm not changing anything, I'm still looking at everything that I, I want to do in here. So... Chances are this first contour, in order to be a roughing pass, I'm going to leave an allowance and step around a couple of times. Well, previously when we did this, even in the standalone master cam, I pulled this out, put it at the very end. We did a machine machine stop. Uh, after we did all of the interior geometry, the clamps went from the outside to the inside, and then we were able to run completely around. If I'm not able to run completely around this part, either by holding it in the vise or moving clamps, fixturing, then I'm going to break this into segments that are manageable, and these are going to be open profiles, or they're going to be contours, depending on terminology. All right, so that's a decision that should have been made back over on this tab, not when we got to this tab. <laughs> All right, so we've kind of committed at this point. doesn't mean that we're stuck with it. just means that we're backing up and we're, we're doing rework. All right, so side parameters, we'll take a quick look at the settings. If we need a roughing pass, how many times are we going to step in? If I need a finish pass, how many times will it, it uh, go around? And what will be the final feed rate for that roughing pass? Zigzag is going to go climb conventional, I believe. It's not like we're doing a, a pocket or anything. It goes around one way, reverses, and comes around the other. All right, so we don't typically get into the, the settings too much. Uh, how do you want to round corners? So if you're comfortable with the, uh, the sharps or going into those values, we really don't need to set those. Just be aware that those boxes take you to someplace else. Chamfer definition. <clears throat> um, if that's checked, then it goes in and we're setting for chamfer. Climber conventional. Um, Depth processing by level or by regions. If this was finishing for or, or stepping down for a pocket or something, um, would it complete all the way through or would it do one level, go to the next pocket, next opening, do that, that to that level, go back and forth by level or sorry, go, go complete or then by region. All right. So, um, I'm saying that wrong, but I, I hope you get the intent is, is it doing it all the way through or is it, jumping back and forth between geometries. 
Uh, rest machining was there something that was previously cut and this tool is going back in and removing that last little bit of material. Depth parameters equal setting versus exact versus distance long. So equal setting and the percentages are set. This would be one that I would go back into the TechDB, find this screen, and I would uncheck those percentages because I don't think in terms of my depth as percentages of the diameter of the tool. If I know that I want to cut to a quarter inch, I'm going to cut to a quarter inch. If I want to cut 300, if I want to cut all the way through 500, I'm going to put in a value there not in relation to the diameter of the tool. That bugs me a little bit. <laughs> so I either turn those off or I go back into that um, those um, uh, TechDB settings and find that screen and, and make sure that those are unchecked. Next time I see it, it's not there. <laughs> Um, the NC, uh, you know, we on the facing operation, we set the use setup definition. That just means that I can come back over to the part setup. And if I, uh, uh, and that whole production thing of I'm, I'm okay with wrapping to half an inch and my clearance plane is 50 thousandths now. I can go in and update this and it updates it for every one of the operations where this use setup definition is checked. So it's a global setting. I kind of like the global setting. It's worked out pretty well of, well, you know, I've been watching it down feed for the last 10 parts and I'm comfortable that it knows that I know what it's doing and what it's doing. I'm going to bring that a little bit closer so I'm not uh, messing with those feeds. Finish, uh, let's see, we got the uh, feed plane, retract between features, just different combinations to get those results, um, uh, to get the desired results. CNC compensation off with compensation engages um, uh, tool center line without compensation goes to radial. So the combination of, of those two items are our control, uh, our, our, sorry, our computer, our control, our wear, our reverse wear. Um, so it's just kind of getting getting used to what this is telling it to do. If our tool diameter is zero, it's with compensation and without G, G41 with G41. If on, we're getting a uh, G41 engaged and it's going to comp to that register. Feature operations, there's the list, there's the machine depth, there's our shortcut to the tech DB if it is something that we want to change. Air segment tool offset, well, probably don't have that, but 75% over. Um, entry points to whole centers if we have them. Lead-ins. Probably for this one we'll go to a start point. And um, oh, we'll go ahead and make it parallel. See what it runs into when it tries to lead out parallel. Uh, but again, these are percentages, 52%. So another place that I would identify the tech DB so I could put values in there that make sense to me. So 0.3 inches, no no angle, uh, 50 thousandths overlap. Okay, well, we're all right with that. So again, going through that list, putting in some numbers that you know right now are guesses, but I see it run at the machine and I'm happy with them. I can build those values in and continue to use them. I really don't change anything on the advanced. Uh, for the posting, do we want um, the uh, tool offset, absolute incremental, absolutes, and coolant is on. If the machine doesn't have it, eh, we'll turn it off. And so just going back. Optimization by shortest path. Well, it's a contour, so not really going to see that. And then when I preview, I see the tool pass. Runs around. Comes off. So that lead-in is a little bit scary. It's starting on that corner and it's coming down on the material. So that being the case, we'll go back to uh, to the arc leadout, turn the values off. I kind of like, I believe that was the way that it, um, oh sorry, we were in parallel for that 1.3, 50 thousandths. This one goes back into arc. So we'll drop those a little bit, um, lead angle, Turn the percentage off on the radius, 0 0.2, 45 degrees. 
preview it again. Now I'm off of the part, comes around, comes back in and finishes. All right, so same things that we've been seeing all along is that you're looking at that um, that toolpath, those those colors. Um, you know, pretty much what it's uh, what it's doing is what you're going to get. And notice that we went from blue to black. So that's now a defined toolpath. And even though I may need changes, I'm still going to go down through that list and know that I've touched each one of those or I've looked at it, made a decision about it, gone through the through the group. All right. So I would do that for every one of these. I would identify those those items that I'm constantly changing those some of the percentages I like, most of the percentages I don't. I would be identifying those in that operation. So when I came back over to the uh, the TechDB, I could navigate to those uh, to those screens and set those defaults where I wanted them. Doesn't that um, take some of your setup here? Uh, automatically All right. So the um, under the optimize, the save as defaults. I don't know at this point. I haven't used this enough. It's it's different in the full version. Um, so the save as defaults. I don't know if it grabs everything, or if it's grabbing. You know. So I uh, until we until we do a couple of those, and I'm I, I can't say that I'm ready to uh, to jump into that uh, just yet. Um, but like these percentage signs, I don't know if it's setting percentages or if it's just setting numbers. So, oh, you like these numbers? We'll set the numbers. It'll still be a percentage when you see it next time, but it'll be the right number for a half inch, half inch end mill. Um, so that's something that I have to, to play with on, on the, um, on the, um, on the default and exactly what it's telling is being told to do there. If I jump into that tech DB ID, it should tell me it's going to take me right to that register. And so there's the blind in condition. This is not the settings that we were in for the mill and for all of those, all of all of those green parameters. These are the settings for depth, speeds, and feeds, tool selection. All right. So more on the operational parameters, not on what we're seeing. Let me just let's go find it. Um, Okay, so that was the operation default setup. Nope, that wasn't it either. Now I'm going to have to look for it again. Sort operation map mill features. Okay, now I'm going to have to go watch the first part of this video to figure out where it was at and what I was telling you to do. <laughs> uh, so we're back in here. Um, I'm going to push buttons until I find that, but not on the video. Yeah. And I would set um, set these values to percentages, set these values to ones that I'm used to, to seeing, and get that into the, the parameters. All right, posting the, uh, the code, post process. Oh, simulate. I want to see what it looks like. All right, so the simulation, pretty straightforward. We're looking at the, uh, the differences. Um, nope, don't need a section view. Stock is shown translucent, transparent. Tool is uh, shaded um, and don't need the tool holder. Not worried about running into anything. Target part, shaded display, so the target part. Um, options, collisions, cut, um, collision, collision, collision. And uh, the grayed out ones, uh, work in progress is the STL file. So that going out to the STL file is we see this cut all the way around. We output it to the STL file. We can import that STL file back in as our stock for the next, next setup. I haven't done that a lot. Uh, so that's not um, really in my workflow, um, but decent option. Uh, turbo mode, so running a... Um, uh, a couple hundred thousand lines mold uh, program. I don't have to watch it make every tool move and try and speed it up. Jump to the end and tell me where the where the, if there are any errors. Go ahead and play. Feed in, run around. You can see my projectiles. 
feedback around. So that wrapping it up, I could go into the lead-ins and say stay down on that one. Feed around the part and have our basic geometry. So just like starting off with any cam package, you're going to have to push buttons, get into, you know, try to develop good habits from the, uh, from the start. Looking at every one of those tabs, looking at every one of those parameters and trying to digest what it means, what it's doing, whether you need to change it, when you need to change it, if you need to change it. And then going through, through all of those steps. And then we'll post process. Uh, so it went to the defaults. That's fine. We'll see what the uh, the editor does. All right. So post process. Uh, do I want to see the preview? Then we can go line by line. Not really. Play. We'll put in the NC code. The other one is just go ahead and post it. When I hit OK, I have not seen the NC editor. All right. So pretty much the. Um, Standard NC editor for a lot of the cam packages now. Basic colors, can read through the code. Don't see anything too crazy. G53 is at the end. Interesting that it put in the H value. I haven't seen the H value previously. G53, G49. All right, so slightly different combination and then go back to the G54, X0, Y0. So. Not bad for the uh, for the post, but you know, all overall, good start. Save it, and then I will take questions.